Protesters have been taking to the streets of the capital Sofia and most other major Bulgarian cities for weeks. Now they number in the tens of thousands. They're calling for the government to step down, accusing politicians of getting too cozy with the country's oligarchs. And that's led to massive corruption among officials and members of the government. Proletina Tzlatanova and her husband Mahmoud come out to join the protesters every day in all kinds of weather. In spite of the rain, we're back again today because we have to do this. We're from a family that suffered a great deal from everything that's happened in this country. The corruption, the lawlessness, I have a duty to be here for the sake of my child's future. Prolatina's father owns a company that makes elevators. An influential attorney decided he would take it over, and Prolatina says he was aided by the public prosecutor. Prolatina's father refused to bow to the pressure and went public with the affair. Now he's fled the country. Since then, his family claims they've been continuously harassed. And then a special police unit broke into their house. In a drawer, they allegedly discovered gold coins that hadn't been there before, she says. A surveillance camera recorded the home intrusion. Prolatina arrived later. She shows us where the coins were allegedly found. The first thing I did was open the drawer. I didn't touch anything. This drawer contained only clothes and a folder of receipts. But they produced a little bag of coins made of a yellow metal. It had been laid on top. And they said to me, look what we found. Prolatina stays in touch with her father, who's in hiding somewhere in Western Europe. She can still reach him by telephone, she says but the police confiscated her laptop. Hello, Papa. How are you? It's grim, extremely grim. Do you know how people look at me where I am now? They feel sorry for me. Once the coronavirus crisis is over, three million Bulgarians will flee to Western Europe. The only ones left in the country will be the police, public prosecutors and attorneys. The protests flared up on July 9th on the Black Sea coast when demonstrators formed up in front of billionaire and ex-politician Ahmed Dogan's villa. He's said to have close ties to the government. The police tried to stop the demonstration, but the crowd managed to break through to Dogan's illegal private beach. Many Bulgarians deeply resent these special privileges the oligarchs buy for themselves. Journalist Yavr Sidrov sees a moment of decision coming for Bulgarian society. They know full well what this is about. We're talking about widespread corruption here in Bulgaria that has infiltrated everywhere and now has a stranglehold on our political system, economy and society. The younger generation's always been rather passive when it comes to politics, but now it's gone too far. They're not going to take it anymore. Member of Parliament Toma Bikov of the coalition Gerb party sees at least some of the demonstrators as enemies of the country and does not agree that the government should step down. Unfortunately, people are joining the demonstrations who are obviously not interested in the future of democracy, nor in justice or liberty. The demonstrators, for their part, insist they won't back down till their demands are met. We shall call a national strike. Until these faces we see up there step down, we won't go away. We'll do everything in our power to achieve a new beginning. And we'll keep at it till we succeed. Prolatina is also hoping the current government of Prime Minister Boyko Borisov won't last much longer. He says he won't step down because there's no alternative. But I believe there is an alternative for Bulgaria. 
She's afraid that, until a new government is in power, her father won't be able to return to Bulgaria. She has no idea when she'll be able to see him again.